respected students today we are going to learn microsoft excel microsoft excel is a software provided by microsoft in order to perform different calculations different formulas you can apply and <clears throat> you can record different business transactions for example uh, income statement balance sheet your calculations in professional world people are using microsoft excel for calculation instead of the calculator you students are using for your studies professionally all the, these calculations are performed using microsoft excel <clears throat> basically if i will discuss more about microsoft excel this is actually this entire in interface you can see is actually a microsoft excel interface in which we have different rows and different columns excel is basically a uh, design on the format of matrices what is matrices as you already know uh, and you have studied in metric and inter in mathematics that matrices are vector quantities <clears throat> in which we have some rows and columns in order to store and record the data so every row and column intersection where one row and one column is going to be intersected so at that particular point we have an address in a matrix where we can store some values so since uh, you have already studied in physics inter and matrix that scalar quantities and vector quantities scalar quantities are those quantities in which you have only values but vector quantities are those quantities in which you have value as well as direction sometimes we call it direction sometimes we call it a best sign of the value for example if i am talking about uh, physics or sciences then i can say that a value force of 40 newton i am applying in north east direction so force is a vector quantity which is showing the magnitude as well as direction in a similar way if i am talking about nick accounting how i can differentiate between scalar and vector quantities in accounting that if i will select only value without its sign without its nature so it means that the absolute value is treated as scalar quantity but when i am going to apply the sign of that value as well it means that i am representing the dimensions directions or the nature of that value it comes under the umbrella of vector quantity so matrices are the vector quantities and in if i want to specify any any uh value in a matrix so first i have to find that which location i want to allocate that value for example if i have 3 by 3 matrix so if my value is written 3 so i have to just find that which location this 3 value is available because i have nine values 3 by 3 means i have nine values because i have three rows and three columns so row 1 column 1 2 3 similarly row 2 column 1 2 3 similarly row 3 column 1 2 3 so i have nine nine addresses on which i can store those values the basic difference between matrices and excel is in matrices all the row numbers and column numbers 
are specified by using numeric values that is one two three row one row two row three column one column two column three so if i'm going to specify the value three for example it is written on row one and column three so i'm going to show the address here write down the address one three that is row one and column three this value five is available in row one and column three but in excel there is a basic difference or row numbers you can see these you can see these raw numbers these are rows raw numbers are available in one two three that is numeric format and column numbers are available in a b c d e f that is letter or alphabetical order secondly if i want to represent the address of any column any cell any value i want to find out the address of any value in matrices i am specifying first row and then column in order to specify the address of that value in microsoft excel what i'm going to do is i'm going to specify first column number and then raw number in order to specify the address of this cell this value for example uh, i have write, i have written over here a value 5 now what is the address of value 5 the address of value 5 is it is written in cell number as column number f you can see this is column number f and it is written in raw number 5 so i am going to specify or i can say this cell address is f5 the value 5 is stored in cell address f5 and you can see i have two bar over here as well this is name box or you can say the address bar the address of this cell is specified in this name box or address bar column address bar but the value we have stored in this or the formula or anything any formula or any text or any string we have written in this cell we can see that thing over here in the formula bar this is this bar this entire bar where this 5 is written this bar is named as formula bar and this bar is named as address bar why i am telling you these things because when we are calcul performing different calculation in microsoft excel for us values are not very important as far as the address is very important why address is very important for example i want to add 1 and 5 so i am going to give the address of these some address that is from e5 to f5 whatever the values i have i'm going to add it so in order to when we are going to apply the formula we have to write down the addresses of the cell so whatever the value contain at those cells are going to sum up automatically and why we are not sometimes we have some values some values change sometimes we have dynamic values so with respect to increase uh, some passage of time those values are increasing or decreasing or, or you can say changing so if i'm going to write down over here 1 plus 5 it always remains same as a static value but if it is automatically changing for example it becomes 4 again uh, now previously it was 1 but now it becomes 4 so why i am adding addresses the benefit of adding addresses is this that whatever the value new value contained at that particular address it is automatically updated in the sum cell so you can see when i have type 4 in this, this specific cell automatically my result is updated so 
so this is the reason why i am uh, telling you that these addresses cell addresses are very important in microsoft excel uh, all right i'm going to discuss some more things and more commands with you the first thing is in horizontal one i have this one th these are different one raw number one and different columns column a column b column c column d and so many columns so how many columns i have i can ask these type of things and uh, you can say bcqs that how many columns are there in one sheet of my, yeah, uh, microsoft excel how many columns so how many columns i have in microsoft excel one sheet so if my options are if my options are you can uh, judge with the options if my options are in alphabetical order that a a a f d x f d l f d n f d so you must specify you know that how many columns i have in one uh, row of microsoft excel one sheet so you can see this is i'm talking about sheet number one only so how i came to know you are going to press hold the control button and press the right arrow key so the and you are going to reach at the last column of microsoft excel row number one so how many column we have in each every every row how many columns we have x f d so you must know you must know this value as far as bcqs are concerned that how many columns we have how many columns we have in microsoft excel one row you can say xfd number of columns if i want to go back to my home home area so i'm going to again press control and left arrow key so i i'm i came back again on the column number a again take it from first column to last column and last column to first column how i can switch first i have to hold control button and then i'm going to press right arrow key and if i want to switch back to my home uh, area so i'm going to hold again control button and then press the left arrow key so i'll be i'll be on my home area again all right if you are going to calculate uh, i can you can cal you can calculate these uh, alphabetical xfd letters in for in the form of counting as well so uh, how we are going to count first a to z it means that 26 column then a a to a z z then a a a to xfd so whenever you are going to count calculate these values you came to know that you have 16384 16384 columns in each row how many columns how many columns you have you have one six three eight four columns in every row so if my in in my view secures if the option is i'm talking about column and you know that the columns are mostly in alphabetical letters but if i have specified the options in the form of numbers so you must know that xfd means a to xfd means total i have 16384 columns in one row of microsoft excel similarly how many how many rows i have in one column of microsoft excel so you can i can specify for you that how many rows uh, in one excel column that is 1048576 how many rows i have in one microsoft excel column so how many rows i have 1048 Five seven six. How I came to know about this? So I'm going to again hold the control button 
and press the down arrow key so that I can reach the last row available in this column. So how many rows I have you can see one zero four eight five seven six. Now I want to go back to my home area. So I'm again going to press the control button and then press at the same time up arrow key in order to reach back to my home area. Uh, now I think this uh, 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 you came to know how we can calculate Microsoft Office account, Microsoft Office rows, and Microsoft Office Excel. If I want to ask you that how many total number of cells this these are the cells the where I am clicking these boxes these boxes are named as cell. So I have so many cells. I have. One six three eight four cells in every in every row and how many cells one zero four eight five seven six number of cells in every column. So if I'm going to ask you that how many number of cells I have total in this sheet one number one that in this entire sheet in this entire sheet how many number of cells total number of cells I have so you can see in one in one row in one row i have one three eight four one six three eight four columns and how many rows i have i have one zero four eight five seven six I have one zero four eight five seven six total number of rows and in every row I have one six three eight four columns so if I'm going to multiply these two values I came to know that how many total number of how many total number of cells I have in one sheet of Microsoft Excel. So how many in this much? So you can calculate if you have uh, since calculators are allowed in our exam. So you can if you know the number of rows and if you know the number of columns so you can multiply and you will give get this result there is no need to learn this values by heart okay the basic thing you must know is how many number of rows you have and how many number of columns you have all right now i'm not uh, telling you right now how i'm going to apply the formula and how i'm, how I'm going to apply the how i have calculated this i will let you uh, let you know that how i have applied this formula of multiplication right now I'm telling you the basics of Microsoft Excel because we have to work with Microsoft Excel so we know in the entire uh, interface of Microsoft Excel that how that how we can work on it all right now some more things some more important things so basically we're, uh, I'm summarizing whatever I have discussed is how the smallest memory unit in Microsoft Excel where we can contain some values is called cell this is these are called cell and how we get a cell where one column and one row intersect each other the point of intersection will give us a smallest memory unit which is named as cell and so many cells so many cells will give you an entire worksheet and multiple you can see plus sign I can add multiple worksheets so multiple worksheets will give you an entire Excel workbook book number one see you know right now by default name of this file is named as book one so this is the entire book multiple cells in a sheet having multiple sheets will give you an entire workbook which you also known as one Excel file 
the second beauty of excel file is that like in microsoft word you are uh, using different in order to perform different activities you are you, uh, you go for different files in microsoft word but in microsoft excel you can perform the entire business calculation in single file or you can say single workbook using different multiple sheets for example in one sheet you are having your uh, patient's records so in other sheet you have your income statement of your hospital or any business you have then balance sheet then cash inflow salaries you have given to your staff so different different things by adding multiple sheets i can see that if i'm going to click on this plus button i can have multiple sheets so sheet number one now sheet number two so i can perform different activities in different sheets you can see these are different two sheets i can add as many sheets as i can second thing that now i'm starting writing something and uh, since artificial intelligence these software are based on ai so these are smarter uh, softwares actually this using these software is actually killing your time to save your time so that whatever the different uh, difficult calculations you are performing uh, you need don't need to perform manually these softwares will help you out and will assist you and uh, reduce your calculation time so for example if you want to generate the serial numbers of your uh, employees uh, for example we have written over here one and you want to generate one to 10 or 15 serial numbers so you you came to know that art there is a smartness in excel there is a, excel is intelligent it is an intelligent software but you when you drag when you drag you can see i'm holding from the right bottom corner when i have a this plus black color plus sign i'm going to hold it and then i'm going to drag it downward so i was thinking that on dragging i can generate the multiple numbers that is one two three four but it doesn't did that thing for me so it means that although it is smart but we have to give some specific logic to microsoft excel so that it can generate values some more values on the basic of any specific logic so now how i have generated a logic that first i have pressed one then i have written two in downward row so now you can see there is a logic of every next digit is with the increment of one now i'm going to select these two values now since i have selected these two values excel is focused on these selected values and excel knows that the the logic is i have to generate the values with the increment of one now if i'm going to drag it from the right bottom corner downward side it is going to generate different numbers counting for me serial numbers for example 1 to 20 or 30 or whatever the number of values i want to generate these data this is this is numeric data these data are numeric numeric there are two types of data qualitative quantitative or you can say string third is string qualitative data or string is something similar so uh, qual quantitative data is the numeric data one two three four which we are treated in the uh, for the calculations <laughs> but if i'm going to write down some text with one two three values or symbols these values are named as sting that is non-numeric data it is treated as non-numeric data and we cannot apply calculations on non-numeric data but if i want to generate uh, student names for example i want to generate student names by using I uh, I have to uh, make a mark sheet of uh, so many students. Uh, you can say 200 students. So instead of typing 200 names, I have given the 
logic of instead of name i am using a logic that first student is named as student 1 then student 2 then student 3 so if i am doing this for example s t d that is student student dash 1 now i don't need to give excel the second value student dash 2 as i have written over here 1 and 2 and then i have drag it student dash 1 and i want to generate the names of so many student that is student dash 1 student dash 2 student dash 3 now excel is intelligent enough that when i have written over a student std dash so it means that excel knows i don't want to change a student dash and i just want to change 1 2 3 after dashes so there is no need to specify the second value if i'm going to select this value only and i'm going to drag it downward so it is going to generate for me the name of different students that is student 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and so on are you getting this so this is how on different types of text and numeric values strings and numeric values excel will give you different types of results now today i will try to teach you or some formulas of microsoft excel later on we we are going to discuss all these different tabs of microsoft excel because many of these tabs i have already discussed in microsoft word as well but still we are going to again discuss these different tabs in microsoft excel as well but i am creating a scenario in which we can use different formulas so that we can understand that how we can work on microsoft excel for, uh, for so for as an example i am trying to make a mark sheet of some students where we can we can have uh five students uh 10 students data and every students is having enrolled in enrolled in five uh, courses and uh what i can say so we are going to check their uh, some values that total of 10 marks what of 10 marks they have in total all those subjects then percentage then grade then their status pass or fail so some some type of scenario we are, uh, a small scenario we are going to discuss in the uh, today's lecture so what i am doing is i am deleting all these values so i have selected all these values by dragging the mouse dragging with the mouse click with mouse and dragging it downward and there is a delete button i am going to delete press the delete button so that all these values are going to be deleted now now i am going to <clears throat> write down some fields fields what are the fields the titles against which we add some records for example name is a title subject 1 name is a title then subject 1 is a title then obtained marks then percentage then status then these are called fields against these fields we add different records for example student number 1 student number 1 subject 1 mark subject 2 mark subject 3 mark subject 4 mark subject 5 marks its obtained marks its percentage its status that either that student is pass or fail then its a grade all these are called if i am going to complete all these fields for one student it is called one record record of one student then i can add multiple records in this field so you must know that what we call these things name and subject one and i'm going to add as many subject like i have in last example i have dragged down words over here i'm going to drag it right word to add multiple subjects so subject 1 subject 2 subject 3 subject 4 subject 5 when you are going to uh, practice this uh, example you can specify your subject name as well for example computer you are studying 
Islamiyat you are studying, chemistry, and whatever the subjects you are studying, you can specify those values as well, or anything you can, any subject you can choose. But right now, I have subject uh, selected subject generalize. I'm I have done it general in a generalized manner. That subject one, subject two, subject three, and subject four. Now I want to do it. Uh, then I am going to calculate obtained marks. Obtained marks. Then I am going to calculate percentage. See if you have in this way that I have written over here text obtained marks, but my remaining text is is behind the the cell uh, numbers L. That is, I can say again, it is behind the column number L. So what I can do is I can drag this column over here so that I can it can show me the entire text I have written of obtained marks. So then we have percentage, then status, either he or she is pass or fail. Then what grade? The student achieved. Now I want to do these fields bold. So I'm going to select all these by two two way I can select, click with mouse and drag it rightward. Another way is I'm going to select on the first value and then keep holding shift button and then press right arrow key to select all these fields then over here you can see over here i have bold bold button that is i can do it by using command as well that is control b means bold or i can press this button as well now i'm going to add some uh, names over here so my first name is student number one so I'm going to add 10 students record over here. When I am making the real mark sheet, then I'm going to add the real marks of the student achieved in subject number one, subject two, subject three, subject four, and subject five in a, in a similar way, student number two marks he or she achieved in subject number one, subject two, subject three, subject four, and subject number five. But if I want to learn Microsoft Excel and I want to perform the activities in a quicker way and want to generate some numbers or marks so that I can learn different formulas, how to calculate obtained marks, percentage, status and grade. So what I can do is I can generate the marks by using a formula logic. So what will be that logic? Minimum marks of any subject is zero. And maximum marks of any subject is 100 for example I have selected all subject marks are out of 100 you can uh, in enter or in metric you can see that you some subject you have out of 50 out of 75 and some out of 100 but right now and mostly and if you uh, are if you can see in the university level all the subject marks are out of 100 so uh, I'm setting the example that all subject marks I am taking is out of 100. So how, what is the minimum marks of any subject a person can achieve? Zero marks, nothing. So I have a formula. Be careful whenever you are writing anything. You can see I have written over here so many things. These are treated as, not, these are not treated as formula. I cannot perform calculation on these things. But whenever you are performing calculations, you need a formula and in order to run a formula, you have to pr press the first thing is E equals to sign. Now, whenever I'm going to press E equals to sign and I try to uh, use a formula. So for example, there is a formula which generates for me 
the random marks out of 100 for student number one in all five subjects and in the similar way for all students in all five subjects. So I have rent, I'm going to press R A N. It means it random. So there are lots of formulas which start from R A N. So I have random formula, then I have random between formula by using down arrow key I'm or up arrow key I am switching the, on these formulas. So random, random between rank average i want rent random between because i have to specify minimum and maximum marks so i'm going to select random between how by double clicking by using mouse double clicking using mouse or second way how i can uh, select this formula is by down arrow key i have selected or up arrow key i have selected the specific formula which is required and in order to uh, in order to select that formula there is a tab button available in your keyboard so press the tab button so see when I have pressed the tab button this formula is in front of me now formulas are very much self-explanatory it is showing you that random between apply give us bottom marks that is minimum marks of the subject then press comma then top marks that is maximum marks so zero comma hundred then you have to close this bracket which is named as we call mostly most flu fluently we call is parenthesis these brackets in microsoft excel terminologies we call it parenthesis so we have opened one parenthesis that is bracket small bracket over here so we have to close that bracket as well so bracket is closed now I'm going to press enter to run this formula. See, I have this formula. Now I, have, I do not have to apply this formula again and again. If I'm going to drag it rightward, the same formula is applied in all remaining subjects and generates this random formula generates the remaining subjects marks as well for me. Any, any marks between 0 to 100 it can since it is a random formula so randomly generate any marks for you it does not mean that when you are uh, applying this formula your first value is 78 it, it does not mean that you also have the same value it can be any value because it is a random formula and randomly generate so random means any value can be generated like uh, i'm giving you an example when you are on the random mode of your uh, uh, audio player or so or cd player so it is going to randomly select song for you so in a similar way it is going to randomly select between these values minimum and maximum within these values it is going to randomly generate any value for you then i'm going to press this hold this uh, hold from the right bottom corner when I have this plus sign and drag it rightward till subject number five now you can see all my values are generated for uh, the all remaining subject of student number one since these values are in a continuous there is a continuity in data there is no row gap between these data so there is no need to drag it if i'm going to double click over here it it works like we uh, do using drag and drop so if i'm going to i can drag i can drag it downward as well but if i'm not if i'm not going to drag it the easiest way is easiest way is you can see if I'm going to double click over here, it will the same result will be happen. And it is easier when we have issues, when there is a gaps. So if for example, I can I want to generate a gap between these two, student number three and student number four. So how I can generate the gap? If I want to add a row between these two so when whatever the row number i'm going to select a new row is going to be generated above above this student number four 
a blank row is going to be generated above so if i want to generate a new row between student 4 and student 3 and student 4 so i have to select student number 4 row so student number 4 row number is 8 so i'm going to click if i want to so now 8 it, it means that the entire columns of row number 8 you can see it is continuous it is continuous and it is continuous entire column of row number 8 are selected now i'm going to click after clicking on 8 I'm, I'm going to right click right click and you can see over here there is a insert insert tab I'm going to click on insert a new row above student number four is generated student number four is moved downward to student to row number nine and row number eight is blank now a new row fresh new row is available now you can see if my data is in this way and I am going to double click. So it can it double click is going to be executed till where the data is continuous. You can see over here it, there is a gap. So there is no value generated after this. So now i'm going to uh, stop this lecture and i'm going to con make another video which will continue from the same uh, same location because i have limitations of a number of uh, minutes over here and if I'm going to continue it, the uh, video size is going to be so larger that I cannot share it with you. So I'm stopping over here and I will continue from the same point in the next lecture.